zadnje predavanje, zadnjih dana konferencije, još jedan član DPU-a, Roksko Gej, o samom sadržaju nastavno ne moram ništa reći, pošto smo svi imali prilike dobro dobro gledati u projekciju na zidu, Roksko Gej. Okay. Um, I would like to thank to the organizers of the uh, conference, uh, to uh, Center za Radničke studije, Sana, Marko, uh, Stipe and Mislo, for inviting me to contribute to the event with this lecture, uh, which could be best described as an attempt at solving or at least uh, systematizing uh, my own schizophrenic attitude towards John Maynard Keynes and his followers in the sense of uh, proclaiming theoretical and analytical um, imp impotence of the research and, and the economic impotence of the policies on one hand and their immense political and social potential on the other. And considering my lecture is the last element of the pro program, as uh, Stipe already said, I promise you that I will try to be as short and concise as possible. I would like to begin by describing what uh, Robert Skrielski, uh, Keynes' proclaimed biographer, calls the return of the master. In the recent times, and especially after François Hollande uh, won the French presidential elections, it seems that the economic austerity was replaced as a key keyword of the day by the uh, economic uh, growth. On the European level, we went from the fiscal pact, an amb ambitious plan of instit institutionalizing austerity policies, to the growth pact, a quite modest plan of managing the aggregate demand through the European Investment Bank and structural funds. And the benef beneficence of the effects of the expansionary fiscal policies is nowadays proclaimed even by such loyal uh, neoliberal advocates as the uh, British Business Weekly, The Economist, what used to be until very recently. We can also recognize this kind of a shift happening on the national level. In the race for votes before the Slovenian parliamentary elections uh, in, at the end of 2011, all parties, with the sole exception of the right, uh, right liberal citizen ballot party of Gregor Virent, competed uh, amongst themselves which one could offer a more ambitious plan of encouraging uh, economic growth. And in the core with the Keynesian economies, the so-called old economists, where we can find, for example, uh, Max Steinecker, Bogomir Kovac, and uh, Joze Menziger, we can hear the growing voice of the economists, which were, until now, the most prominent representatives of the uh, opposing camp. Joze Podanen, for example, who as the Minister of Development under the first government of Janez Janša in the years 2005 and 2006, used to advocate the cruelest neoliberal reforms possible, is today a usual refer refer re reference for the leading left liberal weekly uh, Mladina, and publishes Keynesian pamphlets with titles such as the Slovenian New Deal in the leading um, uh, uh, Petit Bourgeoisie uh, uh, daily Finanza. If Damian first separated from Jansha because the champion of the Slovene right did not sufficiently realize his pre-election promises of uh, privatization, liberalization and deregulation of the economy, he now ur urges the new prime minister to choose restarting economic growth with a new policy triplet of expansionary fiscal policies, microeconomic incentives and rehabilitation of banks. When despair prevails, uh, and sometimes also naked uh, opp opportunism, Keynes can take over even the most uh, stubborn souls. But the return of the master, uh, which is also the title of the book by uh, Skidevsky, did not offer only an opportunity for a yet another ideological transformation of uh, the regime ideologists, for this man of for all seasons. It also opened a door to all those who claimed Keynes as the primary reference during the times when this was far, far from fashionable and when it could also jeopardize one's career, at least if he, she or he was not prepared to wrap uh, Keynes' teachings into a more acceptable package. Among such, the most prominent ones are most definitely uh, Nobel Prize winners Paul Krugman and Joseph Stiglitz, who, despite their conflicts with more orthodox neoclassical economists, still move within the horizon of the allowed in the media and academic space. Uh, it is telling that the aforementioned Damian can also claim to be Krugman's loyal student, someone who has all of his books, as Damian told us in a recent interview, um, and someone who even, did, who even did his PhD thesis on the topic of uh, Krugman's theory of international exchange, uh, which he uh, uh, affirmed it. Uh, the difference between the teacher and the stu student is actually quite small. As Damian, uh, Krugman also traveled the road from an academic promoter of unrestrained globalization and free market to the public promoter of Keynes teachings. In uh, Krugman's uh, case, the turning point were the uh, East A Asian uh, financial crisis of the years 1997-1998. Uh, so uh, as Damian, Krugman also traveled this road 
uh, while successfully defending himself before the accusations of theoretical inconsistency. And it is here where the catch is hidden. Krugman's Keynes is not Keynes of the general theory anymore, as was read by, for example, John Robinson and uh, Himan Minsky, but Keynes of the neoclassical synthesis of Paul Samuelson, which became the dominant economic current after the Second World War, and tried to couple Keynesian macroeconomic and neoclassical microeconomic theory. So it is this theoret theoretical bastard, uh, usually called neo-Keynesianism, a new Keynesian Keynesianism in its more radical form, which allows Krugman, Stiglitz, and uh, Damian political backflips -flip while being theoretically consistent at the same time. But there exist two alternative and politically less schizophrenic currents of Keynesianism, which also gained on prestige because of the current uh, economic and financial crisis. I will not deal with the first one uh, in this lecture, because, but its pecu 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 peculiarity is that it is usually hostile towards Keynes himself, although they share the key analytical points as well as political conclusions. These are that capitalist crises are the crisis of inad inadequate demand or underconsumption and can also be solved within capitalism through corporatist ne negotiations about the wage and sal salary levels, strict regulation of the private, especially finance sector, and active fiscal and monetary policy with the goal of managing the aggregate demand. These are the socialists from the circle around the Monterey Review School, uh, uh, headed by Frank Magdoff and John Bellamy Foster. The second, much more plural and influent current, is the so-called post-Keynesianism, which is compared to neo-Keynesianism and new Keynesianism, much less ecstatic about the mathematical method and neoclassical microeconomic theory. There are many differences between these three main currents of uh, Keynesianism, but not as many for them not, uh, to not be able to agree on uh, key analytical and political points. So um, what is important here is that I do not define Keynesianism by its theoretical references, some even use uh, Karl Marx as their primary reference, nor by its preferred method of research, but by its analytical and political conclusions. And it is this kind of uh, an animal we can also see in, in a modest proposal for resolving uh, uh, the Eurozone crisis uh, by Yanis Varoufakis and Stuart Holland, which will be my main target in the uh, next, uh, the uh, middle part of the lecture. And I will also try to present a better um, a socialist alternative to the Keynesian strategy in the third concluding part of the lecture. Um, both Varoufakis and Holland are academic Keynesian economists, theoretically probably closest to the post-Keynesians, especially to, at least in our circles, currently very popular, popular Ricardo Bellafiore, Joseph Halevi and Jan Taporowski, and with close connections to the reformist political parties. Uh, Varoufakis used to be an advisor and speechwriter to the Greek Socialist Prime Minister George Papandreou before he showed, but before Papandreou showed his true colors and started keeping company with the notorious Troika, that is with the International Monetary Fund, the European Central Bank and European Commission, and before he, uh, again Papandreou, pushed Greece into an economic de depression of world historic uh, proportions. After that, um, Varoufakis started to support Syriza. And Holland, on the other hand, is a member of the same political party for the last five decades, that is of the British uh, Labour Party, where he is part of his, its left wing. Uh, Varoufakis and Holland collaborate for quite a while now, but a modest proposal is without no doubt their most attention-grabbing project, which recently, in May 2012, uh, got its third version. Um, Varoufakis and Holland see in, in the analytical part of a modest proposal, which is followed by a political part, uh, three in interconnected dimensions of the Eurozone crisis. These dimensions are, firstly, the banking crisis, because of the tension between the European monetary system and state regulation of the banking sector, which is preventing successful resolution of its sol solvency problems. And then secondly, the public debt crisis, because of the tension between European monetary system and the national fiscal system, which indeed enables uh, the so-called fiscal responsibility of individual member states of the Eurozone, but also enables speculative attacks of the international financial markets on government bonds. 
And thirdly, the crisis of the third dimensional of the Eurozone crisis is the crisis of underinvestment and current uh, account imbalances, which hit especially hard the countries of the Eurozone in periphery because of the discrepancy between the levels of investment and competitiveness between the countries of the center of the, of the Eurozone, especially Germany, and its periphery in the years before the crisis, and because of the credit uh, drought in the years after its eruption, after the eruption of the Eurozone crisis. With the analysis, as it is presented at the beginning of, the, uh, of a modest proposal, I mostly agree, at least as, as far as the uh, first and second uh, dimension of the crisis uh, goes, but as always the devil hides in the details. So let us look at the problem with the explanation of the third dimensions of the crisis, which became even clearer when we look at the level of political conclusions. According to Varoufakis and Holland, the lack of aggregate investment and current account imbalances of the Eurozone are closely connected. When countries of the periphery of the Eurozone were stripped of the control over monetary policy and the control over fiscal policy was constrained by entering the Common Monetary Union and signing the Pact of Growth and Development, while the, their, their industrial sector was destroyed because of the newly created reg regional division of labor, these countries, uh, these uh, peripheral countries of the Eurozone, were pushed into the trap of dependency on the flow of credit from the center and on the growth of service and real estate sector financed from this source. But peace bought with this means was, uh, uh, could only be short-lived. After 2008, when liquidity disappeared everywhere and the flow of credit dried, the burden of adjustment fell in onto the regions with a lower level of competitiveness and bigger public and current account uh, deficits. And because they were stripped of the main levers of macroeconomic policy, and because substitute aggregate demand, which could fuel their exports and tourism, was nowhere to be found, the only option they were left with were a dracon draconian austerity and other neo neoliberal measures, which enabled them to slowly better their relative position of the, on the European as well as on the uh, global market. But this has two very visible consequences. Firstly, the first consequence is a low, low level of aggregate investment, and the second consequence uh, is an uneven distribution of this investment between the regions with current account surpluses and uh, uh, those with deficits. As a way of exiting this sorry state, um, Varoufakis and Holland proposed that free of the already existing institutions of the Europe European Union, the European uh, Central Bank, that is the European Central Bank, uh, European Investment Bank, and European Investment Fund are used, but only f within the li limits of their current jurisdiction, which makes their proposal politically much more acceptable than the, our comparable Marxist proposals. Uh, proposals, for instance, those of by uh, uh, Kostas Lepovitsas or Michel Lison. Uh, European Investment Bank and European Central Bank would print euro bonds without the common guarantee of all of the member states of the euro European Union, or at least uh, not uh, uh, with the common guarantee of all the, the member states of the uh, euro Eurozone, and these funds would be then used to finance both public through the European Investment Bank and private through e European Investment Fund, investment in infrastructure of all sorts, as well as in, in, uh, as well as in economically, um, socially and un environmentally important projects. Uh, the goal of uh, such system of, of investment would be an elimination of both of the aforementioned consequences of the structural problems of the Eurozone and of the neo neoliberal attempts at solving the crisis, meaning low level of aggregate investment and uneven uh, distribution of this investment. This way, uh, investment would be, uh, this is the term by uh, Varfakis and Holland, Europeanized with investment-led mechanism for recycling current account, account surpluses, which would closely follow Keynes' uh, proposal of the International Currency Union, with, a, with the difference being that it, uh, the uh, proposal by Varfakis and Holland, uh, would be limited to, to the countries of the Eurozone. And at the same time, uh, time the Uvarfakis and Holland's version would be also be uh, post-Keynesian, as it would encourage not only aggregate demand, but also latent demand, uh, meaning that it would uh, encourage demand through increasing, uh, expanding supply. As Marxist economists, Guglielmo Carcedi and Michael Roberts recognize in their numerous critiques of Keynesianism in all of its forms, the problem of such analysis and political proposal hides in their theoretical foundation, in the so-called Keynesian multiplier, which is also explicitly referenced by Varoufakis and Holland in their defense of the Europeanized system of investment. 
Keynesian, Keynesianism divides the national economy uh, into uh, two sides of an accounting equation. On one side, um, we have national income and on the other, national expenditure. So e income equals expenditure with expenditure dividing further into investment and consumption and uh, income uh, uh, and income into profit and wages. So the init initial equation is transformed into investment plus consumption equals profit plus wages. But if we assume that workers do not save, but that they spend their whole income, the equation contracts to just investment uh, and profit. Uh, so investment equals profit. According to Karkady and Roberts, the Keynesian multiplier presents thesis on the causality of the relationship between both sides of the equation. Uh, Keynesian multiplier is so uh, is so um, 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 is, is uh, so in the Keynesian multiplier investment uh, determines uh, profit, but as it is shown especially by Karkady, the economic consequences of the policies uh, justified by the Keynesian multiplier are in the best case neutral, but in the worst case they can even prolong and deepen the crisis. So the Keynesian multiplier uh, has to be replaced by the Marxist multiplier, which inverses the causality, uh, uh, so the uh, investment is determined by uh, profit. So to, um, uh, to repeat, um, uh, we have this Keynesian national accounting equation with where national expenditure equals national income that uh, further divides, the expenditure further divides into investment and consumption, income uh, divides into profit and wages, because we presume that uh, all of the income by, uh, by, uh, by laborers, so wages, are spent. Um, on consumption, we are left only with investment and profit, and Keynesian multiplier uh, uh, is a, basically a thesis on the causality between the both sides of this equation, where investment determines profit, and then uh, Marxist multiplier uh, re reverses, inverses this uh, causality, so the profit uh, determines investment. Uh, here, Karkady and Roberts are, of course, uh, invoking uh, Marx's thesis that the dominant economic motivation in the capitalist mode of production uh, is not production of use values, that is, ful fulfillment of uh, uh, human needs, nor optimal allocation of scarce, scarce resources, but achieving as high rate of profit as possible. Uh, businesses and individual uh, capitalists function as, uh, uh, such, as such only if capital uh, self valorizes through them, meaning that produ it produces uh, surplus on the initial investment, surplus called profit. So Apple, uh, Apple, Apple the company, or an independent investor with, with an office in the city of London does not produce uh, uh, iPads or invest into startup company, companies because they would like to fulfill a uh, human need but because they would like to achieve as high rate of profit as possible. That is, as much profit on the advanced capital as possible. Uh, this is a thesis that also leads Marx's theory of capitalist crisis, which has the law of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall, uh, developed in the third book, book of Capital, as its foundation. So this story is probably known to all of you here, so I will just try, uh, try to shortly summarize it. Uh, the de development of capitalist production is accompanied by the tendency of the organic composition of capi capital to grow, that is a tendency of uh, decreasing the share of variable capital compared to that of constant capital. Because of the pressure of the, their co competitors, individual businesses improve their competitiveness so that they, they invest an ever-increasing uh, share of their capital into means of production and an ever decreasing share of capital into buying labor force. So if we accept Marx's labor theory of value, with, uh, uh, which of course we do, uh, um, which says that the only living labor, uh, uh, which says that only living labor, that's, that is laborers or variable capital, produces value and, also, and not also that labor, that is means of production or constant ca capital, then we can conclude, under the uh, assumption of uh, the constant rate of exploitation, that the technological progress due to comp competitive pressure decreases the level of surplus value in the newly produced value, and with this it also decreases the rate of profit. So the last cause of capitalist crisis uh, is not lack of aggregate demand because of, for instance, uh, changes in distribution of income between labor and uh, capital, nor the so-called irrational exuberance of world stock markets, 
but inadequate rate of profit, although the first cost, uh, the trigger of the crisis, could uh, potentially lie somewhere else, as it was the case with the current economic and financial crisis. As uh, Paul Matic showed uh, the decades before Carcadian Roberts, in his masterpiece uh, Marx and Keynes, The Limits of the Mixed Economy, the implication of, of the inversion of causality in the Keynesian multiplier for Keynesian measures is such that state investment is now seen as unproductive for capital, meaning that it does not produce profit. Uh, if we take an example uh, from, um, uh, from Matic's son, Paul Matic uh, Jr., uh, which he used in his book Business as Usual, uh, so this is the example. When the US USA government bus buys airplanes from Boeing, Boeing indeed receives a profit, but money paid to Boeing presents deduction from profit produced by the national economy as a whole. Government does not have its own money and can only pay a Boeing either with tax income or, or with borrowed funds, which it would have to eventually fund, uh, fund out of tax income. But although it seems that we all pay taxes, uh, they are actually paid only by businesses. Uh, what do I mean with this? We are dealing here with the question of the distribution of newly produced value. We have to spend a part of this value to cover the, the advanced capital. The second part goes in, of, in a form of wages and salaries to buy consumer goods so that the, 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 so that the labor force can reproduce itself. And the rest of newly produced value, that is its uh, surplus part, uh, goes out in a form of profit, interest, rent and also taxes. The income of workers is their uh, net income, after tax income, meaning wage or salary uh, after pay taxes and, co co and contributions. From this perspective, Raising taxes on workers' income is a form of decreasing the level of their wages and salaries. The money the government receives from wages and salaries, as well as from dividends, capital gains and other forms of business income, is all potential profit. When the government orders airplanes for Boeing, grants a subs subsidy to the agricultural sector or, or, or bails out a bank, it is actually only returning a part of the surplus value back to the economy, collecting it from uh, all and give it, giving it to some. The money paid to, paid to Boeing uh, has simply been redistributed from other businesses to the aircraft producer. If we repeat this same point using Karkadi's argumentation, as it is developed in his latest article for International such, such Socialist Journal, Could Keynes End the Slum, introdu introducing the Marxist multiplier, which is com completely compatible with, uh, uh, with uh, the argumentation of both, both matics, uh, but theoretically more sophisticated, and focus and if we focus through this argumentation on the Keynesian proposal of proposals of uh, encouraging economic activity through government, government uh, investment. So let us divide uh, with uh, Arkady um, the, the economy, the economy, uh, the national economy. Uh, this will be uh, uh, important later on into two sectors. Sector 1 uh, produces public works and Sector 2 present, uh, presents the rest of the economy and variable capital invested into them produces surplus value. Uh, if we return back to the previous example, Boeing, Boeing here uh, is part of the Sector 1. Um, uh, surplus value uh, is gained uh, by the government through taxes and then, through orders of public works, is redistributed into Sector 1, which receives profit out of it. With a logical derivation, we can come to a conclusion that the state comes out of the process with public works, works valued at, at the initial surplus value minus profit plus new, uh, new, new surplus value. On the other side, Sector 1 uh, uh, gains profit, Sector 2 um, loses the initial surplus value, and the loss of the whole economy, the whole national economy, is the initial surplus value minus profit. The numerator of the equation of the average rate of profit, which is the average rate of, uh, which, which is average rate of profit equals uh, total realized surplus value divided with total invested uh, constant capital plus total invested uh, variable capital. Um, <coughs> So uh, the uh, numerator in this equation is decreased, decreased for the amount of the loss of the economy, which also decreases the average rate of profit in the, this uh, national economy. Uh, but we also have to take into account um, 
the uh, uh, effect of the government investment into sector one. Um, uh, initial surplus value minus profit uh, for the profitability of the uh, whole national economy, which Karkedi achieves through uh, introduction of the Marxist multiplier. Uh, Karkedi recognizes three possible effects. Uh, uh, um, you can see them uh, here below. Um, uh, where uh, the first possible effect is that if the initial government investment into sector one and the chain re reaction throughout the rest of the economy are such that they form a representative part of the whole economy, the whole national economy, then the rate of profit of the government investment equals the rate, uh, average rate of profit, which does not change, uh, which does not change therefore, the, this uh, average rate of profit in this national economy um, uh, and the same goes for the rate of unemployment. Uh, the second possible scenario is that if the chain of investment effect ends at the point when the organic composition of investment capital is higher than average, then most of the government investment falls to the more efficient businesses, which take away value from the less efficient businesses and eventually force them out of the market altogether, which forces the rate of unemployment to increase. And thirdly, the last, and, and, and lastly, um, uh, if the average organic composition of capital decreases because of the government investment, then it helps less efficient businesses to survive. In this case, the average rate of profit increases and the rate of unemployment decreases. So, but in all three cases, in the first case, well, in the first case, uh, the effect of uh, such Keynesian policy is neutral. In the second case, uh, it deepens the crisis, and in the third case, it uh, uh, puts it off to a later date. But in all three cases, the, this, such Keynesian uh, uh, policy uh, is a failure by its own uh, uh, standards. So to repeat, um, uh, there are three, um, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, looking at the profitability of the whole economy, there are three possible scenarios. Uh, looking at the organic composition of capital. If it uh, remains unchanged, then the average rate, 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 of, uh, rate of profit also remains unchanged. If organic composition of capital rises, average rate of profit uh, falls, and if organi organic composition of capital falls, uh, average rate of pr profit rises but, rises, but only because inefficient capitals benefit, lowering future productivity and growth. Um, to conclude this critique, uh, government spending cannot solve the problem of crisis because the problem is not insufficient demand or, in, uh, or investment, but insufficient profits for business expansion, which in turn determines the extent of consumer demand and business investment. It can put off the issue by supp supplying financial and other businesses with the money they need for to continue operations, which is the uh, third scenario. Um, uh, which is what also happened after the Second World War, when the recurrent application of stimulus was able to provide an ever weakening simulacrum of prosperity, but only at the cost, cost of a rising accumulation of debt. It is also why debt cannot expand indefinitely without either undermining the very ability of governments to function by the growing domination of budgets by interest charges or diminishing the already insufficient uh, profitability of private enterprise. So what does this mean for, the, uh, for a modest proposal by Varoufakis and Holland? Although uh, the, the critique was presented on the example of a na national economy, uh, there is no reason why it, it could not also be applied in the case of the integrated econo uh, European economy. If it was implemented, a modest proposal would also be modest in its economic effects. But in the uh, worst case, it could also prolong or uh, even deepen the, this dimension of the Eurozone crisis. Uh, Varoufakis and Holland cor correctly recognize inter internal dimensions of the Eurozone crisis and prescribe the correct measures. But their Keynesian perspective overlooks the fact that the crisis is actually double. Along with internal dimension, it also possesses an external one, a global one. 
We can not think or solve the Eurozone crisis without thinking or solving the global economic and financial crisis which erupted in 2008. And this crisis is not as much a sum uh, of individual, national and regional crisis as it is by, as shown by, for example, uh, Kirkedi, Roberts, uh, Matic, and, uh, 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 and uh, perhaps uh, the best example is on Andrew Kleiman. Uh, it is a crisis of a low global rate of profit. It's a crisis of a, a, global, uh, of a low global profitability. So we will not be able to escape out of it through national or regional uh, economic reforms, no matter whether they, they are Keynesian or neoliberal, uh, not, no, not, nor through nationalized or Europeanized system of, of investment, but only through socialism or barbarism. But at this point, I must say that uh, while I, re I reject uh, Keynesian strategy as well as the thesis that uh, Keynesian encouragement of aggregate demand through nationalized or Europeanized system of investment, as proposed by, uh, for example, uh, Varfakis and Holland, can start a new cycle of uh, uh, accumulation, I do not reject Keynesian measures themselves, at least not in their social and political dimension. The difference I would like to point out is that, be is that between strategy and tactic. Uh, Keynesian strategy is, as I hope I have showed, false, as it misses its goal. On the basis of Kakedis and Robert's inversion of the Keynesian multiplier back to its feet, we can conclude that the underlying problem in a period of crisis can be solved either by the cri uh, crisis itself or a large-scale war, by lowering capital and labor costs, increasing productivity through technological advances, and concentrating capital ownership in larger, more efficient units, that is by lowering the value of the denominator in the formula for the rate of profit. But both options are bad uh, because they would mean a long and massive suffering of the working class, that is barbarism. Uh, this is why we have to ab abandon Keynesian strategy also when it comes to the end goal. Uh, the, um, in place of restarting accumulation of capital, we have to place its abolition and the creation of a new socially and, 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 and environmentally sustainable political and economic system, that is socialism. But if we reject the Keynesian strategy, what remains of its tactics? As Karkady says in his aforementioned essay on the Marxist multiplier, Keynesian strategy makes a mistake when it thinks that it will be able to better the position of both working and capitalist class and through this uh, defeat the crisis. As soon as we recognize the class contradiction and choose a side, while reconcile ourselves with the economic impotence of Keynesian measures, nothing prevents us from using them because of two other reasons. Firstly, if they are financed out of uh, profits and not wages, Keynesian uh, redistribution of the income in favor of direct and indirect wages and salaries and government investment with a goal of decreasing the rate of unemployment can help to better the social position of the working class. And secondly, as the post-war global, global age of capitalism showed, the political condition of implementing such measures are strong institutions of the working class, meaning parties and syndicates. If they were put into a correct socialist strategy, Keynesian tactics could help to socially and politically strengthen the working class at the expense of the capitalist class. And at the same time, the working class could use this process to reach a common class consciousness, which is also the ideological condition of reaching the end goal of the socialist strategy, that is socialism. So the dilemma between reforms and immediate revolution, between Keynesian, Keynesian, Keynesian and truly socialist tactics, which is also seen by uh, Varfakis, Varfakis and Holland, is false. The, re the correct question is how to use reforms to reach a true political demo and uh, economic democracy without once again falling into the trap of uh, parliamentary and consumer democracy. Thank you very much.
par profilnih stope i ako ta teza zavisi od toga da je visoka organizacija sastav kapitala, šta se onda dešava sa zemljama u kojima ne postoje organizacija sastav, visoka organizacija sastav kapitala? Dakle, u zemljama u kojima to nije slučajno. Da li u tim zemljama onda bi državne investicije bile neuspešne ili bi možda bilo uspešne? Mislim, možda se pogrešno postaviti celu stvar, ali čini mi se da nije jasno i samo izvanja šta se dešava u zemljama u kojima to nije slučajno. Well, ok, but... I mean, we are dealing with the globally integrated market, so basically the, ra the rate of profit is basically very similar countries. For instance, when uh, uh, Kleiman looks at uh, the data for the, uh, for the or, or uh, per perhaps more famously Roberts, when he, when he looks at the data for the USA economy and for the uh, economy of uh, G7 or even for, uh, for, uh, for uh, Chinese economy, the, uh, the rate of profit is uh, quite similar. Of course, there are differences. This, this is why the production is, uh, uh, is uh, functions in, uh, globally uh, in the uh, third world countries such as uh, China and not uh, anymore in the first world pro pro uh, countries. But I think the global rate of profit, uh, I mean, the differences between uh, uh, countries uh, where the organic composition of capital is, uh, is high and where it is low, I think it is very similar. Uh, but I think Sa Sasha will, yeah. yeah. No, uh, to ask you, are all of those uh, models uh, okay. where you, uh, I don't know, looked at uh, how, uh, uh, which effects the Keynesian policy, policies would have, are they all based on the presupposition that investment, that government induced investment is financed by taxes, either by uh, uh, taxes from wages or taxes from profits, because, I don't know, Keynesian proposal would be actually that investment shouldn't be financed through tax increases, but through bond uh, issuing, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. I mean, does it change? Uh, the, the I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, does it change debt? anything? Yeah. I mean, okay, uh, okay, also the bonds, uh, I mean, the, 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 the Public debt will, of course, also have to be repaid through taxes, but there is a temporal dimension of the problem. So, I don't know, you can issue 10 or even 30 bonds, and uh, I don't know, this uh, does change anything. I mean, if you consider also this yeah. aspect. I mean, Kakidi's uh, model, which is the most uh, sophisticated one, uh, it, it does not uh, uh, include a temporal dimension. But I think in the last instance it doesn't really matter. I mean, whether if there are one-year bonds or 30-year bonds, uh, I think as you already recognize, in the last instance they are repaid, uh, repaid through income, through the tax income. So I think, I mean, of course here you can, you know, um, I mean, of course the temporal dimension uh, 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 does, uh, does, uh, does. Uh, uh, influence the uh, cost of finance, but I think, I mean, in the last instance, I think it doesn't really matter. Um, sorry, I have to do this in English. I, I wanted to follow on from that because I think that's the key question in a way. Because uh, you have uh, a two fold crisis you have the uh, problem of profitability, long term profitability, but it's doubled and I think at this moment overdetermined by the financial crisis. And the crisis strategy of the Eurozone, for example, is a defense of fictitious capital. And therefore, that prevents the, the, the actual destruction of capital, except uh, the only, uh, the, the only, the, the only uh, way in which this uh, enables the recovery of the system is through austerity, in other words, increasing the rate of exploitation. Nevertheless, the crisis of fictitious value is, is, uh, uh, cor corrodes the ability uh, of capital to renew itself, not so much because workers can't uh, buy goods that were produced but haven't been purchased, but because uh, fictitious, the defense of fictitious capital uh, creates no incentive to cap for capital to reinvest, and he hence you have these incredible figures, a trillion in the US, a trillion in the Eurozone, 700 billion uh, pounds in, in Britain of capital that's, or profits made in the last couple of years which are not being uh, invested, but I think the problem with Varoufakis in a way is, is more interesting because actually it's not so much an immodest proposal as an indecent one, uh, in, in the sense that uh, what are the three measures, I mean as far as I understand this, you have good banks exchange, uh, I mean let's put this in inverted, heavily inverted commas, good banks exchange good stocks for the junk, bond, uh, ju junk stock of bad banks. So in other words, you have an equalization of uh, 
uh, uh, a kind of e e equalization of uh, uh, fictitious capital. Uh, on the other hand, the state then takes onto its shoulders the combined debt of the Eurozone and issues bonds to the finance markets. And then thirdly, the state starts to print money. Now, I think that in, in a way you actually have a magnification of the defense of fictitious value. That thereby, you, in other words, all you're doing is check, moving bits of paper around in this scenario. I mean, you know, good stock, bad stock. What is good stock? Good stock is, again, the presupposition that these uh, the, uh, fictitious capital will make a profit uh, at some future point. Um, the, the, if the Eurozone takes on the, the, the bond, then uh, uh, Germany and France have to stand behind it again. So, so in other words, the, it, it doesn't actually resolve the problem. Now, the third point is actually quite interesting. And here, I think we could, maybe we can have a discussion uh, because I'm not totally clear, because if you start to print money, it's this fiat money, you're re redistributing purchasing power, in effect. In other words, you're devaluing money. Possibly also, if, if the money actually goes into the real economy, there will be one, inflation, two, we'll have real interest rates. We have negative interest rates now. And all of those three things actually could lead to an even bigger financial crisis as people start to uh, be able to look at each other in the mirror. Uh, you know, they can see themselves in the mirror and they don't trust anybody else. So in other words, it can set off a, a new series of explosions. So in other words, uh, despite the fact that this is meant to be, the Varoufakis thing is a Keynesian project, actually it turns out as kind of hardcore neoliberalism uh, for it to work. It only actually makes sense through, through, through further austerity measures. So you, I, I think that actually, you know, in, in, in a way, whilst the Karcheli argument is our baseline argument, I think he, he's really, he really ignores form in his presentation. And actually, this, this, this undermines our, uh, our political interventions. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I mean, I, I completely agree with you. I would just like to point out that, I mean, where you can say that, for instance, the Eurozone crisis is a, is a double crisis. It is, on one side, it is a crisis of, uh, uh, of the institutional framework of, of the Euro Eurozone, and on, on the other side, it is, it is a crisis of a global, uh, 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 of a low global rate of profit. But I think you, you cannot say that the current crisis is a double, uh, like you presented it. I mean, it, that on one side, it is a global, uh, it, is, it is a crisis of a low global rate of profit. And on the other, it is a financial uh, crisis. I think here, I mean, I, I, I think here uh, that the financial crisis is more or less an expression of the, of the uh, global of a low global rate of uh, profit. But uh, uh, with the rest of it, uh, your comment, Terry, I uh, completely agree. <coughs> What do you think, though, about if, uh, no, but seriously, yeah. what, what do you think if the central, European Central Bank starts to print money now? OK. I'm well, you know, because that, 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 uh, would you think that would create more of a crisis? Do you think that that would, uh, you know, one thing that Karcheli considers in his earlier work that he seems to have forgotten about is the way in which actually state intervention by lowering overall rates of profit can keep the show on the road. Okay. So, we, you know, is, is there, I mean, th we're speaking theoretically now, is, uh, yeah, but I mean, printing, I mean, I've yeah. told you what I broadly think, but do you, do you have a kind of counter, counter argument to that? I mean, money has to flow to have an inflation. Uh, inflation. Yeah. I mean, you can print money all you, 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 yeah. you want, but if you don't have an enough uh, high rate of profit for businesses to invest, I mean, this money will, will won't uh, go into, um, how to say, flow. I mean, That's right. It, yeah. it won't flow. Yeah. So um, basically, I mean, you need this condition. Uh, for the effects you predicted uh, to happen, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this condition does not exist. So That's I right. think uh, yeah, yeah. this may be the best argument against both monetarism and and Keynesianism. In fact, yeah. that you have one uh, uh, that on the one hand uh, the automatic emission of money does not lead to inflation. There yeah. are these positions, and it's not only effective demand because, uh, uh, as you said, this this um, clearly shows that the, uh, the primacy, the calculation of profitability, and uh, not neither. Uh, the pure technical emission of money, yeah. or or the demand as as the as the, as the point of, of the part. Yeah. So but, yeah, I think I want to say one thing to go with the end with the political aspect. Um, well, you know, I don't think that you can. Um, that for me, Keynesian is either uh, uh, to name something as Keynesianism. For me, it functions either on this uh, on the strategic level, or or, or it's, it's no longer Keynesian. Because uh, on the tactical level, uh, we, we could very well argue uh, 
and there is the literature uh, existing, uh, not only Rosalutsen, but many other Marxists uh, who have uh, um, uh, precisely advocated that kind of, of, of tactical uh, movements. Uh, um, but the end point has been uh, decide, uh, um, decisively different from, from, from Keynesianism. For me, Keynesianism is either on the, on the strategic level that you have uh, uh, criticized and, and basically Discarded, okay. and so I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it uh, maybe out of tactical reasons in, in the terms of, of uh, well, you know, um, trying to intervene in broader debates. But one might use, uh, um, one might, might call it Keynesian tactics. But um, you know, without without the, uh, if you lose the strategic uh, um, uh, references, the, the Keynesian uh, broader, I wouldn't call it the Keynesian anymore because it, it becomes something that is so deeply a part even of the socialist tradition. Yeah. That that's uh, why we call it Keynesian. Okay, uh, I agree with you. I mean, uh, I, I, I like you already pointed out. I mean, I am calling this Keynesian because of the uh, political reasons, because it is uh, easier to launch them uh, uh, under this uh, term, other than the, uh, as opposed to the if you call it like it is. I mean, it is uh, part of the social strategy. But it's also maybe it's, it's much in the capitalist class also as a strategy, not as a. We're talking about Keynesianism. For the similar case in the, on the other on, on the other side, Keynesianism as a model for uh, like it was in, uh, after the Second World War, as a model to to, to save the as, to save the capitalism. As, you know, as Keynes said, in the long run, we are all dead. So there's no such a thing as Keynesianism. Is a, you, we are all dead. Yeah. Just it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I, I did just want to add because um, I think it's important to talk about you know the politics of, of uh, our kind of uh, uh, you know uh, our kind of demands on the state and uh, a, uh, a, in, in terms of the struggle against the austerity and so on um, because. I think we need to understand that, that, that when we talk about things like uh, non-payment non -payment of the debt, nationalisation of the bank's controls on capitals, uh, forms of investment to increase unemployment and wages, that, we're, that this, is a, this should be seen as a kind of transitional strategy uh, to increase the capacity of struggle of the, the working people generally. And that we have to understand that, that to, to the degree that we are all, at all successful in this, the crisis becomes worse, actually. Um, and the problems become even greater because these, these become a direct threat to the reproduction of the capitalist system and we can see this quite obviously in the sense you have mountains of debt of fictitious capital that they hope to realise you know, over a longer period by essentially uh, forms of debt slavery you know, pro contra reforms, privatisation and so on and I think it's worth um, uh, having, uh, considering the problem more uh, broadly because we have some interesting um, historical lessons. There was a discussion in the Comintern uh, in 1921, uh, quite a brief one. Um, uh, the the, the uh, report was given by uh, Elgin Varga, the, the, their kind of one of their um, uh, uh, one of their economists, and it was in relationship in relation to hyperinflation in Germany in, in 21, where essentially. Um, the, the taxation measures of the government uh, weren't able to repay the debt to, to the Allies, so what they went for inflation uh, in, in order to uh, uh, devalue the debt and to actually uh, to, to, to take surplus value from the working class. And so the Comintern made a series, uh, uh, they had a discussion, it's quite interesting, saying, well, we're not simply talking about state management of the economy, because this, this can easily be a form of state capitalism. Uh, so, in other words, they reject the Keynesian position. Nor are we simply talking about workers' control, you know, because workers' control can actually also be um, a form of uh, co-option co and co-management of the crisis. So, in other words, they knock out autonomism and they knock out various forms of syndicalism immediately as apolitical. And, and they, they say that actually our, uh, the way we should understand these measures is in terms of uh, 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 developing the combativity of the working class and giving it a, a, an offensive perspective. And I think that this debate is kind of you know, you know, one, one that, that, that we still need to have. Uh, because it's interesting that the left has divided into kind of weak Keynesian measures on the one hand and ultra-syndicalist radicalism, you know, and uh, kind of capital, we, we reject capitalism, that's all gone on the streets, you know, 
There, there has to be that, that sort of mediating uh, relationship between the political program and the, the, the kind of struggle. Zahvaljujem gostima, zahvaljujem slušateljima, izlagačima i tako da vidimo se drugi.